Is is there other things you're doing besides writing books that is um, passive income? Because uh, in talking to you, you know, you kind of opened my eyes to like there's uh, your licensing artwork for to print on bed sheets and all kinds of random stuff. You know, uh, yeah. going to these licensing fairs. Do you do you think that way anymore, or are you just focused solely on trying to get those books and stories done? I think it comes and goes in waves. I think that you. Um, because touring can feel a little like that too, where it's like side work, where you're not necessarily getting books made, yeah. but you are still helping them. Um, the weird thing with touring is that you don't really, it's not really monetized, you know what I mean? Like you're selling mm-hmm. books when you go on stops and stuff, but you don't, um, no one's paying you for your time or anything, and, and you don't really see, like you can see the bumps in sales. That, when a book comes out and you're touring, um, they do that because they want to get you on the New York Times list for the mm. most part, and to promote the book just generally, but mostly because it, they, the publishers really like that these books get on these lists, and so they can say, well, it's a New York Times bestseller, but that's because they sort of put you very strategically in places where it was going to sell that many books, and the mm. stores that, because the New York Times list is actually not a cross-section of general sales, it's a cross-section of general sales at secret stores that no one knows are selected for those things, but publishers have figured out which stores do report (laughs) and so that's why you end up in some tiny town in Illinois Um, it doesn't make much sense you sell 30 books that night why did I go to Illinois but they're saying well that's a reporting store and so that's why you go but it's just they only do it for the first few weeks so that they can sort of give it this initial push and get on the list and then they can say well it's a New York Times bestseller it's really weird, but those so, kinds of so things. So can I get a list of all the shot <laughs> yeah, stores that you? I'm sure that I'm sure the list is somewhere. Maybe it's like this weird, like you know, uh, stone cutters club you have to get into before they give you the list. I think they're based, I think they maybe change them too, so this doesn't happen too often. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Oh boy. Um, but anyway, all that side stuff. The touring feels kind of exhausting because you are doing yourself a lot of good, but you're also just talking about yourself a lot, and you're not and you're making you're not making any books, and that gets exhausting too. Not making yeah. books feels exhausting after a while because you're feeling the time that's going out the window, and yeah. you know how long it takes to get a book out. Um, the side stuff besides that, like whether it's merchandising or things, I haven't actually gotten as into as I want to. I think that the, the kind of work I do, I like thinking of it in other areas. Like I think that I do really simple looking things, and so you could apply it to different products and things like yeah. that. Um, there are a lot of authors who understandably are really resistant to this kind of thing because it's not the book and it's it, it feels a little cheap to do it. But I think if it's done well, it could be really neat yeah. and it's exciting stuff. It's just that licensing is a really murky pond. Um, there's a lot of... I was talking to someone about this just the other day. I think it's because designers whose job it is to handle licensed material, it's not the most high-minded intellectual end of the design field, right? Like you, you're not really solving new problems or coming up with original design things. You are trying to find, you know, an elegant way to repurpose something, and often that's not really all that elegant. And so you can just stand, if someone, if your job is just to take a character and stamp them all over a pair of pajamas, then that's not really a great design job. And so you often get sort of people who aren't really caring about the work too mm. much following through and then the, then your stuff is all over crap, crappy crappily designed things or it's going into shops or it's being made in unethical ways because all these you know the whole yeah. thing just sort of snowballs yeah um and so licensing is tough and it's also just i don't know maybe they don't have a huge interest in you know picture books don't sell as many numbers as they used to it's kind of like the music industry where a big hit for a picture book isn't nearly doesn't mean nearly what it used to even 10 20 years ago um and so i'm not sure that you know, they still sell them for movie rights and things, but on their own, I don't know if Target would be super interested in pajamas with a picture book character on them because the mm-hmm. numbers just aren't there to back up that kind of an investment. Oh, okay. um, I'd like yeah. to do it in a smaller way, you know, get small, sort of smaller shops that really care a lot more anyway, but I just don't have time to wrangle that kind of thing. I'd like, yeah. I think there are licensing agents out there, I hope that there are, who do a good job and can sort of say, like, I know some really good shops who will really make nice things with your drawings. I just haven't. They haven't found me, and I haven't found them. But it's not something I'm adverse to. But it is something that's really great with books. Is like like I said before, I own all the rights to that stuff. The publishers don't own the characters or the drawings even. They mm-hmm. own the right to publish them in that particular venue in that book. But if mm-hmm. I want to, like I sell prints of every page of every book, just in case someone has a favorite page or something like that, they can get a print of it, and I don't have to talk to the publisher about that at all because I still own the drawing. Yeah, that's it's cool. really interesting. It's just that I haven't had time or it's just there's not a greased 
system, yeah. I guess, to sort of to go in there and show people how it is this would work. Have you um, ever found someone to help you make your game that has triangles and squares that you were trying to <laughs> convince? Well, <laughs> I, when is this when is this podcast coming out? <laughs> Probably know? in like a month or so. I don't a month? Know. Okay. Well, then it by then they'll have announced it. It, the we had I did have a triangle and square app idea a long time ago, um, and I think it was actually an idea before apps were an idea because I wanted to make it as like a browser game because it was like in two thousand and six or something and iPhones hadn't even come out yet we were all still you know using regular phones mm -hmm. and so I I think I thought of it as a browser game but my programmer moved to Brazil or something and I didn't end up pulling out but. Um, but just in the last little while, we've sort of resuscitated the idea, and Mac Barnett and I uh, are working on books based on those shapes instead. With I think I think with ideas to sort of see what we can take them into other arenas too. But we uh, the idea came up again, and we both had kind of this affection for the characters themselves after talking about them long enough. The same like what you say, like if we talk about these characters for couple months, we kind of know what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so we thought, well, you know, we don't really have any clout or experience in apps and books ourselves, like on our own. I'd done the Google work and Mac had done some work with some people, but it was nothing we really felt comfortable initiating just yet. But in order to explore the characters and to also just kind of show their marketability, I guess, but just because we liked the book story that we came up with too, we pitched it as books. We're like, well, we, we, we're pretty sure we can get books made because that's where our, you know, our muscle is, for lack of a better word, right now, is that we can get a meeting with publishers. And so my publisher um, bought this this trio of books, um, one about a triangle, one about a square, and one about a circle. Uh, okay. <laughs> even though all three of these guys kind of meet each other in the course of the thing. Um, and I think that if these things prove to be, you know, fun to work on, I'd like to take that into... I don't, I've never had a book idea where I was like, we could make anything out of these things. It's always about the book, very centered on the book. But yeah. these books are, I think, the world feels like a lot of fun. And that's, the, that's, a, that's kind of a first for me, is that like, I was just as interested in sort of broadening what this stuff might be, just as much as working on the book it's on its own itself. Okay. So I think it, it happens after a little while. It's just that you need to feel confident in the actual, like I wouldn't want to make a game out of any of the hat books. They wouldn't, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> or I wouldn't want to make an app out of those things because they're, they're their own thing. It, it only makes sense in, like so much of that is you learn about, like we tried to animate I Want My Hat Back, or they did animate it. A place called Weston Woods in Connecticut makes a business out of animating picture books for libraries and things and giving schools and stuff. And they're very okay. short, they're like five, six minutes. Um, but they've done both hat books, and it's so strange the staging problems that come up with these things. Like the bear is standing, and I want my hat back, it's a bear who's standing on every single page almost, in almost the exact same position, asking whatever new characters on the page if they have seen his hat. Mm -hmm. And in, 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 in making a book of that, it's easy, and sort of how you would stage it, because you don't need to stage it, he's just standing there every time. Yeah. But in a film, do you cut? Does he walk off? Every time, does he, do you just, it's kind of a weird jump cut if he's just standing in the same spot over a cut with a new animal. Is it a crossfade? Like, what do we, does he walk on? Does he walk, like, what does he do? And all these weird things that you just don't have to solve in a film or in a book have to be solved all of a sudden. And so you really start to think, well, this is really best as a book. It doesn't really, you know, it's, it's prime medium is definitely this and not anything else. And so I like the local. I like how that can happen. I like. It, I was almost proud that it was so hard to make a film out of it because it's like, well, then it's, it really ought to have been a book. That's good. It found its form, and so with any, but with this thing, with the triangles and squares thing, it feels like, oh, I want to watch these guys run around. I want to see them do some stuff. This is a lot of fun, and that's kind of a. I think that maybe it just takes the right project to come along before you can start to see how you'd expand on the worlds, and the characters themselves. Because the ones I've made so far, they're just so locally tied to whatever tricks and stuff I use to make the books work that it doesn't work in any other medium. <laughs> we'll see. It'd be fun to get back. Like, I, I do miss animation. It'd be fun to do it again. Um, yeah. It's so much work compared to, oh, like, yeah. books are a lot of work, too, but it's it's a different kind of work. It's very intense stuff in yeah. animation. I, I miss the group, and I miss, you know, what you learn off of each other. And also yeah. just coming up with, like, watching watching you in an office work on a scene and watching me in an office work on a scene, then later we see the scene and we're like, oh man, we really did work on that scene. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just so cool. Yeah. And you don't get that, that you don't happen, that doesn't happen with books ever. It's just you <laughs> and your own mistakes and your own messes. But I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
do you do any of your own marketing or does your publisher kind of handle it? It seems like your publisher handles a big load of that. They do. I think that, um, yeah, they have their marketing with picture books is so funny anyway, because it's such a, um, the people you're trying to get to aren't necessarily children because mm, yeah. they're, they're, they're books for children, but you, you want to be able to reach librarians and teachers and independent booksellers yeah. and online booksellers and those things. And because kids aren't buying the books most of the time, parents are buying the books or teachers are buying the books or librarians are buying the books. Yeah. And so you have to, most of the marketing outreach that the publisher does is towards them. It's not really aimed at kids. The books, when you're making them, you're aiming them at kids or whoever it is you have in mind. Um, but when it comes time to market them, you do a lot of work with librarian blogs and with teachers' blogs. And you, you, um, you do go to schools and things and you sell the books to kids that way, you know, indirectly. But I wouldn't know how to begin to reach, you know, all those avenues are so well dug by now between yeah. the publishers and the teachers. And there's so many clubs and, and you know, ways of connecting with them that are just established. And so I wouldn't know where to start doing that. Yeah. Um, I've got, I, you know, I, I try and post enough work on Twitter and Instagram and things like that to reach whatever limited viewership you can get out of that and sort of just sort of, you know, the new book's coming out pretty soon. And so if there's anything I think is exciting to show for the new book or when I, when I actually get approved from the mail or something like that, you take pictures of it that way. But it's, you know, it's really low, yeah. really low impact stuff for the most, like it's not really a marketing push it's hard to know how to advertise this stuff also because picture books are a strange product because they're short you can basically read them in the store it's not like you're selling someone on a film or a novel where they're like you're gonna this is gonna blow your mind when you finish it they can yeah. finish it in four minutes and so teasing it or um being vague or, you know what I mean, about what it is it's going to be to sort of try and get the audience excited doesn't really work because you show so much of your story in the teasing. We just did a minute and a half trailer that we're finishing up uh, for it to post on YouTube somewhere, and I basically go through the entire book. <laughs> like, I don't know how, I, I'm not sure how to tease these things because they're so short. I like that they're so short, but you have a hard time leaving anything out. You want to tell the whole story. That's what you're proud of. It doesn't, yeah. you know, it's not the same thing as a film where it's like that first sequence is the best. Like a picture book, it has to all work like really quickly. And yeah. so they're hard things to sell that way because you don't, I wouldn't, like if I was marketing them, I think I would just let as many people, like I would just post the whole damn book online really because people don't buy picture books because they want to be surprised. They buy them because they already know they like the story and they're okay with reading it a hundred times to their kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think I, I really, like publishers will never do this, at least mine will never do it. But I think posting the whole book online and saying, do you want to own this book now that you've read it, do you want it in your house, would be really effective. Huh. Because like people don't buy Where the Wild Things Are anymore because they don't know what's going to happen. They buy it because it's this thing that they know they want to have in their house or they want, to have, like, yeah. they want their friends to have it in their house or whatever it is. It's a known quantity. And so tipping your hand that way I don't think affects sales that much, but yeah, I think that like our best, one of our craziest times in I Want My Hat Back when it was first sort of getting any traction was someone went into a bookstore and took a phone, took, took their phone and took a picture of every single page and posted it on Reddit. Okay. And, and my publisher lost their mind, right? They're like, we have to stop this. Uh -huh. And I, and then they're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. The Amazon numbers are through the roof. <laughs> and that's that's the same principle. And they were like, yeah. what do we do? Who do we send a, a letter to? And I'm like, don't send a letter to anybody. This is yeah. really good. And it's, it's and that's the, yeah. yeah, it's spreading, but it spreads over the course. Like it's a really unique product that way because it's not like a film where you can bootleg it. You can bootleg it, but everyone still wants to buy the book yeah. if they like it. And so yeah. it's not like a film where it's like, well, I've seen it. I don't need to own it. I don't yeah. need to pay a ticket for it. I've, I know it. But with a picture book, you can know it and still want to buy it. And it, that's tricky to get around. I think that if, um, you know, it's a, it's a weird thing to market that way because then what do you do? Because the yeah. covers, my covers especially, don't really say very much. There's <laughs> there's two characters and a title, and that's that's the way I like it. But yeah. it's not going to, you know, it's not going to bring in the throngs. Two turtles looking at a hat isn't going to line them up around <laughs> the block on its own. You have to tell them it's going to be a good story. And so <laughs> it's yeah. a weird thing. I don't, I don't know if I'd be any good at marketing because my taste runs so low key, but they have to, they count on the story sort of selling it. And that's a lot to ask of an audience that they would buy the thing because they have to know the whole story. It doesn't really make for 
a really sexy front page it just um they have to like the whole book yeah yeah i don't oh, i do know people i do know a lot of authors who set up their own tours and stuff to that point you were making before yeah um as to whether this is done because a lot of authors if they don't think they're being toured properly or they're not going to the areas they'd like to go or even if they live in cities that they think just have markets that aren't being tapped like a publisher might send you on two or three dates but they wouldn't do your city that you live in and so you would have your local bookstores that you're in touch with anyway um, like if I'm ever in a bookstore in LA, which is rare because there's not very many, um, but there's like a little one down in Highland Park now by where we live. And I went in there like two weekends ago and it, they have a nice little kids section that they're trying to curate really well. And we got to talking. I was like, yeah, we should do an event when, when the tour starts. I'll try and get it going. They'd be like, oh, that'd be great. Stuff like that. I really, I, I'm getting more comfortable with it. First, it felt a little bit precocious to assume that they would be interested in something like that. Yeah. But if they know the book already and they have it there, you can kind of ask, well, would you be into this? And they say, yeah, and then that kind of stuff. But I know people who get much more ambitious with it, and they'll call bookstores in other towns and be like, I'm coming through. And they, it's, it's not unexpected, and it's not unwelcome, I don't think, by the bookstores to get that, because they like any sort of events. Yeah. As long as they yeah, like the true. book and they think they'll, they'll, get them, they'll get the community involved, it's done quite a bit. It's not unheard of um, that, that you call your local independent and even I'm not sure Barnes and Noble does the same thing. I doubt it. But the independents are very are a lot more up for it, and they're yeah. great because they're the ones who really set the trends now. Anyway, Barnes and Noble and these other bigger stores, they aren't. They're watching the independent stores to see what they like before they end up ordering a bunch of it. All this stuff is grassroots now. It's oh, totally yeah, flipped. Yeah. And so all the independent bookstores are the ones that you want to get at anyway because that's the biggest community. And if there, there's some really influential ones, there's, you know, there's four or five or many more than that, but like really big flagship independent stores that keep blogs and they, they, they sort of have newsletters and things. And a lot of the smaller independent stores watch them for trends and stuff. And they're all so well connected because it's such a social group. They all have meetings and there's organizations and things like this. And they all meet up and tell each other what's going well. And, and that really is where the trends start, is these independent booksellers who are in touch with their buyers who walk in the door and say, I want a book about vampires falling in love. They're like, well, that's, that's really strange. You're the hundredth one today. Maybe this is a trend. And then, it's, and then they report that it's a trend and it turns out it's a trend. Yeah. <laughs> and, but that's where it happens is in these, in these independent, they're really fascinating places, but they are really up for, and if you, if, yeah, if you kind of, if you make some things that they like and you're listening to them when they tell you we want this or we want that, um, it's a very useful and really supportive community too. Hmm. Have you ever thought about, or would you ever consider putting a con like making a picture book to just exclusively put online or like to post one little panel at a time on Instagram? Yeah, I had an idea the other day. There was a story idea I had um, while I was at DreamWorks that I pitched, I think to somebody and my agents always really liked the story. Um, but for some reason, I feel like if I did it now as a book, it wouldn't, it'd just be sort of a light book. Do you know what I mean? Like it wouldn't really feel like it, I think I've gotten better ideas since then, if that makes yeah. any sense, but I still wouldn't mind drawing it quickly. It wouldn't be a heavy book to illustrate. And just in the last week I was thinking, man, I, what if I just tried it and did it like in a quick, like kind of the side scrolling thing where we just, you know, just as a treat for me to sort of relax and do a kind of a, yeah. a quick story and to get, cause it's so frustrating being like you do books and then they can't come out for a year and you can't yeah. show them to anybody. But it would be so relaxing to just do one and just post it and be like, oh, look, a new story. Yeah. And that'd be so neat. I really admire that about like the indie comics people and, and the guys who just post stuff all the time. It must be so interesting to just have an idea in the evening and then by the next morning, <laughs> a thousand people have read it. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. I I would be curious to see how it would work with someone who is established like like you are in publishing but then do it just do that on the side <laughs> I, yeah i don't know it what seems, it would i don't know what it would look like i hope it wouldn't look like it was just me because you worry too there's so many yeah uh, like even with self-publishing and stuff you don't you don't want to give the impression that you don't need the publishers because you do they are very useful yeah. not even just in the marketing way but in the editorial way and all these things um if you like every now and then you have an idea that you just think is so well formed already that you're like I don't need anybody to tell me what to do on this um, then it would really work for those things especially if you didn't want to monet like I don't know how you'd monetize it <laughs> yeah. but it would just be nice to sort of get it to spread around and people you know it's just a very one-sided thing to do I guess but yeah, um, yeah I don't know I, it was, I, we felt the same way even with there was a weird little story that I had for these hat books where I was like maybe I could just 
self-publish it and put it in like a set or something that like when people buy our three books we could just send them this little side story mm -hmm. but it's a it's, it, mm. it is kind of from the publisher's perspective it's kind of a shots fired thing because it, it really is saying like silently that you guys wouldn't have wanted this and i don't need you anyway to do it <laughs> yeah yeah I, I don't know and it's not that wouldn't be the feeling it would just be like i want to sort of do this small thing that wouldn't be a real book but it would just be a nice present and I, I wanted to make it anyway and I just know yeah. it wouldn't be a viable. Yeah, there's all sorts of weird new models and stuff, but it'd be fun yeah. to do like a little Instagram story or something like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, so um, last question, I promise. No, no, this is fun. I so, like talking, it's been nice. Um, so what is your like long-term plan? What are you, what do you see for the future? Are you just trying to sit down and produce another book every year get some out are you trying to be the the uh dr seuss and and when you croak you have a big old line of books <laughs> that <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't i don't just in the last little while it's felt like and not because well partially because of this that picture books and books in general bookstores are changing and there are less of them for sure yeah. and so you know even the best guy who made horse-drawn carriages <laughs> couldn't keep it up after a while like you don't want to necessarily you know that's yeah. that is the fear of this like we were talking about earlier about like just kind of sticking to what it is you like to do the worry is that you get so specialized in what it is you like to do and maybe you maybe you do train and get to be the best guy at this and whatever it is. But then all of a sudden you've trapped yourself too. You become so specialized and you didn't generalize at all and diversify your skills yeah. because you didn't because you were stubborn about it or because it just didn't interest you. And then all of a sudden the things that interest you become financially untenable. Um, and books aren't I don't think that picture books are ever gonna go away completely, but they're already, you know, um, the trend isn't upwards for sure it's getting yeah. better we had a rough patch when i first got into it the sales were really down but independent bookstores have like i said they're kind of her heroic people and they've managed to sort of found find and work towards a stable sort of sales thing and that you know it's always changing amazon's always pulling new tricks and figuring out how to undermine these things and uh, and just picture books don't sell they used to sell, they used to sell millions and now they sell tens of thousands and that's okay yeah but you do kind of want to make sure you're going to be all right. And so, uh, and also I think you, you can, your interests do come and go in waves, you know, once you've done enough books. Yeah. Uh, I was really excited to do books at first because it was a brand new medium, right? You're figuring out these new, these new rules and these new things that you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. And it's so exciting to get these new restraints and, and sort of lean against them and find out what's possible. But after you've done that for a little while, it's really interesting to try a new medium and being like, well, what are the rules here? What can we, what can we figure out? And what, what it, it excites you to find out those new things. And yeah. so once you get any kind of, if it goes well with the books, like, and it has gone well with the books, then you can maybe take that and spend it somewhere. And I don't really know where I would spend it, but it's not always going to be there. That's the other weird, like, you know what I mean? Like you can't <laughs> yeah, expect yeah. that whatever you have in the bank as far as getting a meeting with somebody or, you know, having an idea in another area, you're not always going to have that opportunity. And so if things are going well, that means you're excited about your own work, but it also means that maybe if you had ideas for other places, now would be the time. So that, that impulse is sort of, it's slowly rolling, I think, that maybe it's time to try different areas so many of my friends have gotten into games from being in more like film or books and they love it it's so exciting and it really is like where all the cool kids are hanging out these days it's so much fun <laughs> and and they're yeah. just they're they're completely obsessed and they and the audiences are massive right like you put yeah. you really and you can self-publish these things and you can take chances and it's and if it goes well financially my god it's just crazy to see what happens it's it's really interesting and and the rules are still being written and and no one really knows what this stuff is capable of yet. We're all still being, it's, you know what I mean? Looking at, yeah. at, at games and what's going on, it's, I really like that idea. I just feel very much um, over my head when it comes to developing a game. I don't really, the rules are so different and what makes yeah. a good game doesn't make a good book. And 
man, my favorite games are a lot of the time really ugly and they don't need a good <laughs> designer or anything like that. It's just all about physics or, the, or a good gameplay, which who knows what that is even. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like it might be animation all over again, right? Where you're like, well, I can do that if I can do this. And then you get yeah. there and you're like, I hate this and I'm not good at it. Yeah. And I don't know. It's, it, but I'd like to try. I think it'd be really fun. And there seems to be a really cool group making that stuff. So it'd be a neat community to, to jump into. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I think, but but the books. It'd be nice to. The books don't like. You don't have to be cool. Is the great part about books. It's like it's not like being in a band or even with games. More and more, where you're like, oh, you're not the cool one anymore. You you had an album out like ten years ago, and music has changed since then. Picture books. Your audience is recycled every four years, and they're because <laughs> they grow out of them, and also they're brand new, and so trends, trends don't exist for kids. They exist a little bit. But they like it's it's such an amazing audience because they really are open to almost anything, and they're not judging it based on what they think is cool right then. Yeah. Kids, you know, books about trucks sold a hundred years ago, and they will sell today, and they do because little boys love trucks. Yeah. Maybe, maybe little girls love trucks too. Kids just love watching machinery, and they <laughs> like. But they just like good books too. They just like a good story. A hundred years ago for kids is a good story. Like it really yeah. doesn't change too much. That's yeah. fascinating. And so it seems like if there is a market for them that can sustain something and make for some a healthy income, I think I'll stay for as long as I, I'm interested and as long as they'll let me. Yeah. But it would be nice to diversify and take a year and do something, you know what I mean? Like I do something else. But I think I'll always yeah. try and come back to make a book. Because it's just such a it's such a fast way to get a story out too. You can have some crazy ambitious story idea and get it out as quickly as you would like a, a film would just take forever based on the same thing, but you can just write the sentence and it happens. It's so interesting. It's so light and great. It's so addictive yeah. that way where you're like, I can just write this. It'll happen. Then it just happens. It's so much yeah. fun. And My, so low risk for them to publish it too. Like publisher will be like, yeah, we'll put that out. It only costs us this much to print the book. And you're like, great. Whereas a film would be like, well, you want to have a shipwreck and you want to have a hundred animals and this. And you're like, yeah, but it'd be a cool story. They're like, yeah, but that's going to cost us a million dollars we can't do that and they won't do it but books you know you can it costs just as much to print it yeah i've i picked the wrong medium of books because i i get an idea for <laughs> for mine and i'm like okay that will take me two more years to finish that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> but man your audience though i've when i first started doing picture books and this wasn't that long ago four or five years ago um yeah. people were not they were just becoming starting to come around to graphic novels as like a viable thing i think one of the agents i talked to before I found mine was an agent who represented a lot of graphic novel kids. Uh -huh. And I think Kazoo uh, Kibishi, who, is, who does uh, Amulet and all these, um, and he had done Flight, that's how I knew him. Yeah. He, was, he had just sold, I think, <clears throat> Amulet to a production company or something like that. And it, was, it felt like game on for, for just uh, graphic novels generally to be this, to have this second life in the films and everyone was looking to them. And the agents were just like buying them everywhere and it was this great thing. But the market really followed up on that. Every single library in the last couple of years, uh, school libraries, public libraries, bookstores, all have giant sections, at least as big as picture book sections for graphic novels. Mm -hmm. And kids have totally accepted it as, as medium and as a valid and totally separate storytelling tool. It's amazing what happened. Yeah. Like, uh, there's no more exciting, like with, with kids' books and that audience, and even adults, like the whole thing, that's, I think that's the most exciting end of books generally right now because everyone's just, it's, it's brand new. It just showed up and it's so strong. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's brand new kind of in the, I guess, in the independent. Well, I mean, it seems like I've heard, I've, you know, growing up, I was always heard about graphic novels and it's like, it's the new thing, but technically it never really took off. <laughs> I think it has, though. I think we but finally now I, tipped it. I think yeah. that the, the, the current generation now it has. of kids, yeah. um, this, I think we're, we're looking at the first generation of kids now in grade schools who showed up and it was already there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if they didn't oh, have yeah. to go find yeah. it. They walked in, in the first day of first grade, they walked into a library with a hundred graphic novels on the shelf. And yeah. It doesn't have to be oh, this subversive sense. thing that they have to sneak in or something and no one's going to yeah. tell them they aren't reading a book when they're reading one. It's done. Yeah. Like the battle's over, and they won. And the kids now are just—it's an accepted thing. Well, we'll talk to if you talk to Reina uh, later on. She'll—I've never seen it. I've never seen anything like that. If you ever do a book signing with Reina Tegelmeyer, it's the most humiliating thing. 
<laughs> because you are watching, first of all, you're watching millions of people line up, but you're also watching every single one of them come up and say how emotionally connected they were, they were to the story and the work. And it's like with your stuff, sometimes it happens, like, you know, my own stuff, rather, like picture books, it happens. Sometimes people say that, that they were into the book, but yeah. I've never... Even looking at like other novelists and stuff, people, there is something, there is some, and this isn't just the medium, of course, it's Raina being good at it, but there is some secret key to people's hearts that this stuff has. I've never seen anything like it. It's, it's unbelievable. Well, that's encouraging. I, I'm, it's, it, because, you know, from me, just like coming in, working in the studio I've been working on, I did two books this last year and I haven't released any of them. And I'm like, still like <laughs> wondering, you know, like, uh, how how these are going to sell once they're actually printed and, and you know um, and so it's it's encouraging to hear that uh, you think that the graphic mo novel model is really a viable one now and so it seems like it's it. exciting. Like I, I really yeah if you're I can't think of a better time for it it's and there's so much good work huh. too like there's so much great stuff yeah. being done and it just seems like they've broken out of different age brackets you can make them for small kids you can make them for yeah middle grade you can make them for adults like all of it just it's become yeah. a, and it's really exciting too because you can't even say that for any other kind of book you hmm. uh, like uh, novels you can't make them for you know grade schoolers really I mean you, you can make them for grade school like the, like the second third fourth grade maybe by then but mm -hmm. um, you can make graphic novels for very young children and you can and you can't make picture books for adults without getting really cynical about it I don't think I haven't yeah. seen very many good examples of picture books for adults, and they just think of it as a nostalgia thing anyway. But you can mm -hmm. make legit graphic novels for adults. Like, it covers every single age group. It's really evolved into yeah. an amazing thing. How interesting. Thing. So are yeah. you, you going to ever do a graphic novel? Oh, I doubt it. I, well, it hasn't come well, up you yet. Well, you did that comic in the flight, that little I show. did comic. Well, that took forever, too. <laughs> I think it'd be... I don't know. It's not something I think about in the shower you know what i mean like it doesn't come up <laughs> organically for me i don't know i think it really is a separate language it feels like i so, some people can do both um a lot of people i know who started with graphic novels are very talented storyboarders and and picture yeah. book people but they started with that they did the hard one first i think it really is the hard one huh. um it seems like it just in terms of workload if nothing else but um, yeah but i don't know i don't Maybe if I started it, it would the opportunities and what, like sort of what's of, what's possible with, like for me to do storytelling wise would come up, but I just haven't for some reason. It I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know, and it's not a lot because I read a lot of them, but I don't. Um, I never think it's almost like with music where it's like I I love listening to music and I even like playing other people's songs sometimes, but I'll never write a song. I have no interest in it. And it's almost like that where it's like, this is great. I'm never going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, and it's not like a sad thing. You're just sort of like, you're just in awe of this mysterious yeah. medium that some people have found their way into being great at. It's yeah. I like it that way. I think it'll probably stay that way. <laughs> see, see, I'm, I'm the opposite where I like listen to music. I go, Oh, that's cool. And then I try to write my own music. I'd never, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm horrible at it all. <laughs> no, music is like I think I think about that all the time though. It's this like yeah, it's this great thing where it's just like I'm happy for this to be a total mystery as far as how it comes out of somebody. How does yeah. this happen? And it's the same thing with graphic novels where it's like how in the hell like how did yeah. you even start this because it's so ambitious. Every single graphic novel oh. just seems like a massive yeah. But a lot of my good friends who I went to school with have become great graphic uh, Vera Brosgold. Oh um, yeah. I wasn't, she's, and she's doing picture books now too. Um, Emily Carroll, uh, okay. she, I don't know if you know her stuff. She's great. She's actually pretty well known now. She did a book called Through the Woods. She had a, whenever she puts one online, it just explodes. Um, mm. This one called His Face All Red. Oh yeah, I, um, I know of her stuff. Uh -huh. That one kind of blew up really crazy. But a lot of people who were in animation turned out that's the way they went, is that like they were in animation, but the strength of, of it really showed in and they can do animation beautifully, but when they left to their devices, they're brilliant graphic novelists. Yeah. Um, there is a correlation for sure, but I think I went the other way. I think I, I, it was always, um, anything I liked about animation, it turned out, was because I liked picture books. Huh, yeah. Well, you've done very well with it, so I, I, don't, <laughs> I think it's the right decision. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> I love it. Well, it was so much fun, and I Man, will thanks hit so you much. up again yeah, in a little in touch. bit. And if you're ever in Idaho, yeah, up. I know. I, 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 <laughs> I don't know the if you would bring me by there. <laughs> There's nothing here, so. 
<laughs> you might not ever find your way out here. <laughs> that sounds very appealing, actually. <laughs> <laughs>